Hey everybody, welcome back to the Couch of Knowledge. Today's episode, we are with Dr. King. If you guys want to introduce yourselves. What's up everybody? I'm Matthew. I'm Derek. I'm Brandon. And I'm Griffin. Uh, earlier this month, they actually released uh, their new album, Potentially Lethal Game of Chance. And with that said, they're here to answer all of your questions and all of your neuroses, because if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be them. So let's start with the beginning. And the first question that we have comes from Greg. And Greg is in a very particular situation, uh, because Greg asks, if your wife has her heart set on naming your son Adolf, what do you do? <laughs> question whether she should really be your wife. <laughs> That's probably the first thing I would do. Good place to start. I think my first move would be to buy a baby-sized fake mustache. <laughs> Those are two different ends of the spectrum. <laughs> He's against it, you're like, well, I'm gonna enable this one. Uh, a compromise. <laughs> <laughs> Dolph. No? <laughs> Let's get rid of the A. You know? Dolph is yeah. Dolph, yeah. Dolph, 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 Dolph. Maybe you could do, use the PH. Yeah. Get rid oh, of the F. Yeah. Now we're going to rocky territory. Yeah, Dolph yeah. I was hoping somebody Dolph would say. Dolph Lundgren Dolph Lundgren. There you go. Yeah. If he dies, he dies. All right. All right. All right. Well, Greg, either three of those will work for you. Uh, the mustache will work the least for you, or at least the least for your child. But if you don't like your kid, do the mustache. Oh, that's a whammy right there. <laughs> it's like a daily whammy for this kid. Never show him the History Channel ever. He will change. Um, our second question comes from Daryl. And Daryl is very angry because there are a lot of exclamation points in this. Daryl asks, why does February only have 28 days when other, the other months have 31? And why don't we just balance them out? That's a good point. My argument is, has always been, February is the month to stop drinking. Because it's like, the, it's a, you take one month off, and that's the... And you can't do it in January, because no, no, no. yeah. New, New Year's rolls you into January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta roll strong with that. Yeah. I agree. That's a, it's like the shortest month, literally. I like it. With that, I love the practicality of it, <laughs> but with Valentine's Day there and so many lonely alcoholics, that could be super dangerous. Oh, that's, that's true. That's, that's true. a good point. Mm. That is a good argument. Although, now I'm going to know which month Maybe we just need to move Valentine's Day. Where would you move it to? Well, you can't take March 14th. No, it's already. That's been set aside for another day. What day is March 14th? Wait, it's Steak and Blowjob Day. That's Steak and Blowjob Day? <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. in great territory now. Okay, this is a new... That's, a, that's an international holiday. It's yeah. international. Where have I been? <laughs> it's a month. It's always the month. Well, it's it's because it's a month. Because it's Valentine's a month after Valentine's Day. Yeah, so you get her chocolates on, on February 14th, and you get the steak on March 14th. So what if you do Valentine's Day March 13th, Steak and Blowjob Day March 14th, so no matter what you did, you're awesome yeah, the next day. Right. All right, you know what? I like this. I think we can work together. <laughs> All right, Daryl, I hope that answers your question and it gives you a new insight of what to do with your month. Uh, <laughs> our next question comes from Caitlin. And uh, Caitlin asks When someone you think is stupid starts agreeing with your every word and argument in public, do you reconsider your arguments? I start making stuff up to see if they keep nodding. Just to see, you know. Okay. Yeah. So you just cruelly attack them with your mind. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Or my imagination, like you know, <laughs> or a water balloon, you know, whatever comes first. <laughs> you went from must Adolf mustache to <laughs> mental abuse to water ballooning people. Yeah, I'm really a nice guy. No, I, 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 I forget about all this. Any other takers? Any other takers? Uh, I'd say it just means you're very. I mean. You're very persuasive, so I'd say you know if you, if you, the dumb people and the smart people, you know, the more you can convince, the better. So I stand by my my scruples. <laughs> this comes from our most charming band member. Well, well of <laughs> course, <laughs> he's talking about steak and blowjob. Yeah, that's right, man. And I, you know, I know I've never told a lie except for right now. That's, that's the best that's example true. for equality ever. Dumb people, smart people, who cares? They love you anyways. That's right. No, there you go, there you go. All right, well, Caitlin, don't be too worried. The man who introduced Dave and Blue Job today to our lives is giving you his answer, and if not, you can just mentally terrorize everybody. <laughs> uh, our next question comes from Andy, and Andy asks, if you go to a band show and they really suck, but then they ask you, hey, what did you think? 
What do you say to their face? You gotta be brutally honest. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta just do it. That's it. You're not gonna pull your pull any punches, frame it nah, diplomatically. Fra diplomatic, dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you just you gotta lay it out there. Otherwise, you're lying to them and yourself. All at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> brutally honest. But thank you. I think you're gonna get asked a lot of questions after shows from now on, Payne. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, our next question comes from Karen, and Karen demands to know if you could have a tickle fight with. Any historical dictator, who would it be? Mussolini. That was so quick. Great question. All right. <laughs> any any reasoning behind that? Oh, you know that there would be good coffee after it. No. Didn't turn out. And the trains always ran on time. That's true. Right, yeah. Seriously, tickled. Was it any? Sorry, was any historical leader? Any dictator. 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 Cleopatra count. That'd be. Towards the top of my list. Did you dictate? You probably dictated in your land. Yeah, you yeah. dictated a few times. Yeah. There was a dictation. <laughs> yeah. Our next question comes from Christian, who asks, What is the most polite way to tell someone to go away forever? I, I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're looking at me. Okay. What am I going to say? Yeah, just brutally honest. Uh, please go away forever, please. <laughs> that's a very polite. That is, oh, you do please the light. That is the most polite. Anything? Yeah. Politeness. Anything don't do the jerks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, just... It, this is better off. I mean, you could cook them a meal, like a really terrible, terrible meal. And maybe they would just never call you again. It's a good strategy. It, 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 yeah. it kind of depends on the context. I mean, I always went to this particular Indian restaurant for dates that I wanted. I wanted to like not. You know, <laughs> if, if that was, if I knew like this was going to be a one-time only sort of deal, this one <laughs> Indian place in uh, in New Haven, it's a it's a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 gra the graveyard for dates. <laughs> um, our next question comes from Jenna, and Jenna asks. If you could heckle a man the way men catcalled girls by construction yards, what would you say? Heckle a man. Heckle a man. Yeah, that's a new one. Um, like, like nice sweater vest. <laughs> like, nice like argyle socks. Right. Only fancy men pass by this construction <laughs> yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice boots, man. I really dig your fucking corduroys. <laughs> yeah. Those thick cords, man. Oh, Good man. for you. Sweet yeah. hat. Looking nice. <laughs> yeah. Jetta, you have more than enough answers now. There's no reason you should be alone on a Friday night. Uh, okay, well, our next question comes from Travis, and Travis asks, You're stranded on a deserted island for two weeks without food. Which bandmate do you eat first? Uh, I think we all would probably taste pretty gross. Yeah. I'd yeah. probably, I, I don't know. I'd taste I love like you guys, but I, I might choose, choose to die. <laughs> <laughs> sand! Do you I'm sorry. Sand first. That was awesome, but I can't let that slide what he just said. Whoa. He said he's like Gator and Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> Get out of here! You definitely eat him now! <laughs> Electrolyte Shipper <laughs> Shippers! Well, that's that's that said, our next question comes from Jeremiah, who asks, If your dog started to talk to you, not only talk to you, but give you stock tips, do you tell anyone, and do you also invest in these stocks? I think you'd have to try it. You'd have to see. You'd definitely have to sample. See what was going on. I'd say. I yeah. mean, that sounds like yeah. That sounds pretty magical all around. So I would say, really? yeah, definitely. I would put put some credence to that. A little bit of money, but I wouldn't tell a lot of people. Yeah. No. Probably not an issue. I wouldn't tell dog, anyone. Dog theft, probably. Yeah. Depends. I mean. What's he asking you to invest in? Purina? Right? Yeah. Puppy chair? I don't know. No. Maybe he's asking you to invest in something a little higher buy. Maybe some S&P 500 stocks. You know? I might consider his advice if the portfolio is fairly diversified. Right, right, right. But, no, no, no. you know, I can't, I can't put it all on one. No, that makes sense. You gotta be smart with your dog yeah. stock tips just because, and you don't want to tell people about it because he's become really popular and he's not going to give you stock tips. He wouldn't even hang out with you so like, I've already got stock in bacon strips. I mean, well, that's just, that, that's a gold mine. No yeah. one's running out of, wait, no one's not buying bacon strips. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. for everything. I know. Yeah. <laughs> bacon is the duct tape of the kitchen. <laughs> <It's> really... <laughs> I mean, on the other hand, if you've got a talking dog, you're not going to need 
a lot of stock, stock tips. tips, man. That sounds like a money making machine gold right there. Yeah. Yeah. You, what you got to do is you got to take your dog and create a television program where your dog gives the viewers stock tips. Then whether they win or lose, you won't. I know this is the vertical integration, man. I like this. Yeah, this is fun. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> write it down and then kill Ben. <laughs> All right, good job. <laughs> so once again. This is Dr. King. They have their new album out, just came out this month. Uh, potentially lethal game of chance. Please, in your heart of hearts, thank them silently to yourselves. And thank you guys for being here. A pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much. No, thank you. And remember, if you have any questions, any comments, anything you want to know, if you want to tell me secret things about past lives, which I'm not really too interested in to begin with, but I enjoy letters, email us at rck at resonate.tv. And once again, Dr. King. And the moon is cold, a sick and serenity follows.